On June 6, 10, Phuket will host the Congress of the International Skating Union, ISU. Many important issues will be considered there, but the key one is raising the age limit to 17 years in women's skating, now 15. This is especially critical for Russia all our champions of recent years, Yulia Lipnitskaya, Evgenia Medvedeva, Alina Zajitova, Anna Sturbakova, Kamila Valieva, took the first awards for adults from the age of 15. ISU wants to raise the age gradually, next season it will remain the same, 15 years, in the 2023-24 season it will rise to 16 years, and in the 2024-25 season it will rise to 17. Initially, this issue was brought to the Congress by the Norwegian Skating Association. Here is their application. The Olympic figure skating champions among women were 15, 16 or 17 years old when they won the title, 1994, 1998, 2002, 2014, 2018. Three of these five champions did not participate in the next season's world championship. Two, competed only at the next season's world championships and then ended their careers. There is a lot of pressure on senior skaters. The debut at the adult level at the age of 15 does not seem to motivate skaters for a long career. Our sport should promote rules and a competitive environment that support the possibility of a long career. In order to interest the media and the audience, our species needs athletes who can promote sports in a positive way for longer. Young skaters are forced to perform complex technical elements in order to be able to compete with more experienced and older skaters with better skills. As skaters grow up in their psyche, body and technical capabilities change, it becomes more and more difficult to maintain the same complex technical level. And now the ISU Medical Commission has come out in favor of raising the price by publishing detailed arguments. Below is the full translation. It seems that this is the first such detailed and official explanation of why the age should be raised. Competitions, training and recovery depend not only on the actual age, but also on the age of development, physical, mental, cognitive, and emotional maturity, as well as on the age of the skeleton, the degree of ossification of the bone structure. When considering the age limit, it is necessary to take into account both the age of development and the age of the skeleton. It is quite possible that the admission of minors to competitions will expose them to loads and risks that are considered inappropriate for their age, not only physically, but also from the point of view of psychological and social development. Young athletes need to cope with numerous stresses on the way to the sport of the highest achievements. First of all, they are exposed to high physiological loads caused by training and competitions. Secondly, they tend to experience social problems, they need to complete a large number of school assignments, and they may also face potential difficulties associated with peers. Thirdly, they need to participate in competitions and cope with the stress of competition. Ultimately, improving performance is usually the main concern of ambitious athletes, as they always take care of their achievements. The ISU must also consider the image it wants to create for junior and adult champions. We know that elite athletes can delay the onset of puberty by an average of two years compared to the general population. Genetic predisposition, intensive physical training, nutritional status, participation in competitions and psychological stress in childhood and early adolescence determine puberty development periods. Athletes engaged, in particular, in aesthetic sports, are predisposed to a delay in sexual development. More and more data indicate that energy deficiency plays a crucial role in the pathogenesis of functional hypothalamic hypogonadism in female athletes, violation of the function of the pituitary gland and sex glands, due to which children have underdeveloped genitals, obesity or anorexia. Metabolic and psychological stress activate the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis and suppress the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis, which delays the development of athletes. Chronic negative energy balance resulting from systematic training and insufficient energy consumption, common in aesthetic sports, can delay sexual development. Young athletes, especially those who engage in sports in which a prepubescent or lean appearance is habitual, are at risk of developing a relative energy deficit associated with disordered eating or eating disorders. In a study by Wayman, 
it was found that intensive training of gymnasts in combination with inadequate nutrition significantly affects sexual development. These prepubertal effects are not observed in male gymnasts due to other training regimes. Routine monitoring of gymnasts during their vulnerable growth phase is necessary to minimize the lifelong physiological and psychological side effects of high-impact training. Preliminary data indicate that the risk of psychological trauma associated with participation in elite youth sports is high. Most of all, burnout, disorderly eating and the long-term consequences of injuries are of concern. Nervous development of the brain and nervous system reaches 95% by the age of 7. This gives children the opportunity to develop motor skills of dexterity, balance, coordination and speed in general training. A junior athlete who develops neuromuscular control early is selected by coaches and motivated by early success. But he may get injured due to insufficient development of the skeleton or muscles or be unable to cope with the psychological stress that occurs at this time. A junior athlete who develops more slowly is not initially considered talented. But when both reach puberty with the same strength, muscle mass, neuromuscular development and emotional maturity, the early developed one begins to fail because he no longer has an advantage, he is not progressing technically and is not the only one with these skills. Such athletes lose interest in training, become disillusioned because their body changes during puberty, forcing them to relearn skills they acquired very early, and they quit classes or get injured. Nevertheless, an athlete who develops later, but steadily in accordance with his skeletal and muscular development, should be encouraged to remain involved in the process at the early stages and not be disappointed in the early development of other athletes. They need to train further to reach their full potential. Both of these athletes are at risk of ending their careers, but for different reasons. Leaving athletes at the junior level longer and giving them time for psychological and social maturity along with the development of their nervous and technical skills, we better prepare them to cope with the increased psychological load and pressure of adult sports. This is important for their emotional health and well-being, as well as for all-round development. Skeletal age There are two aspects in this area, epiphyses, growth plates, and the level of rapid growth in adolescence. An immature skeleton along with rapid growth spurts are risk factors for certain types of adolescent injuries. Epiphyseal plates in adolescence are more susceptible to injury than a fully developed skeleton. The growth plate, epiphysis, consists of cartilage and is the last part of the bone that ossifies or hardens into solid bone. It can be two five times weaker than other structures, ligaments and tendons, around the end of the bone and joint. The growth plates, which are most at risk of stress-related injuries, are most heavily loaded during repetitive actions. For example, the knee and jumping types for pushing and landing, the heel and running types, the hip and jumping types with multiple knee lifts for pushing, the shoulder and wrist and lifting movements, and the back end types with prolonged flexion or excessive extension. Rapid growth puts a strain on the joints of muscles and tendons, joints of bones and tendons, ligaments and growth zones. The increase in strength required to adapt to these changes, which will allow a child or teenager to continue to develop the same limb movement speed as before the growth spurt, may occur unevenly. Such an imbalance in height and strength, combined with the load created by training and competitions, creates a situation conducive to the development of injuries from excessive load. The concern is that during a period of known vulnerability of the skeleton, a teenage athlete may be subjected to excessive loads associated with high-level competitions, which exposes him to a greater risk of injury. As a rule, epiphyseal closure and final growth are achieved at the skeletal age of 17 years according to Graylick and Pyle standards. There are many risk factors for injury, posture control, anxiety before competitions, life events, previous injuries and the amount of training that can be controlled to protect an elite junior figure skater. There are also adequate data obtained as a result of research on how to prevent injuries among participants of youth competitions. These are neuromuscular training, protective equipment, mental training to increase self-esteem and changing sports rules. Increasing the age threshold to 17 years gives the time needed to reach the maturity of the skeleton, reduces the risk of epiphyseal injuries if training loads change during periods of rapid growth, 
and expands its development of social and emotional skills. Most importantly, the ISU is obliged to take care of the physical and psychological health and safety.